A few more comments on energy games. I revised the board a little, I raised some things just for room and yeah, some more stuff. I wrote the middle because uh, and I moved the scavengers to the middle ish kind of. Uh, remember the show, the middle? Kind of, those are kind of like a scavenger, you know, people in the middle. People who uh, go along to get along, you know, the people who will vote for the winner, you know, they, uh, they won't vote for somebody if they don't think he's going to win. <laughs> and then I added a few more little things on the psychic vampire, but we all pretty know which psychic vampires are, and people are dipping out of our bucket, our proverbial bucket. Uh, sunny people. I used to always call them shiny people. If you've heard me refer to them before, I refer to them as shiny people, not sunny people, but same kind of thing. And, you know, they're the real attractive, charismatic people that everybody loves, almost everybody loves. And uh, I wrote most in red, and I didn't elaborate on that last time. Because uh, I've noticed this with, uh, I'm attracted to these people myself, but I've noticed that some people just hate them. Um, it's rare, but there's a few people who just hate them. And I don't know if it's, uh, you know, repressed feelings type of thing that they don't want to deal with. Something in them just triggers them. So they, they've been a few enemies. Latent uh, attraction or something they don't want to fess up to or who knows. The other thing I want to say about these shiny people, I, of course I talked about the bad side, you know, the downside for them is to get tempted into taking advantage of people because uh, it's laid out for them so nicely to do so. But the people who can really stay that positive all the time and um, really can shine and yet not take advantage of people, a person who can stay out there in the public and not use people, still be a good-hearted person, even generous person, a person like that who's so positive in all those ways can do actual real magic. And I don't usually talk about magic. I don't really believe in magic, so to speak. So someday I'll have to address it, I guess. I don't really... It's a spiritual pursuit. I don't really see magic as a, pursuit, as a spiritual pursuit. It's an interesting thing to play with, but it's ultimately not a spiritual uh, game type thing. You know, it's, it's something to learn, I guess. But ultimately, I don't know if there's really that much there for you, ultimately. It's kind of like aliens to me, too. I don't really feel ultimately that that's a big answer for us. I do like some of the prophecies, you know, the Ra and stuff like that. I have respect for what they said, but, you know, people have said that without saying they're from another <laughs> planet too, you know. It doesn't really make them any better. The Daryl Inca, the uh, guy who does Basher, when I hear Daryl really get into it on his own, you know, I, I find him very deep, very interesting. More interesting than Basher, frankly, but that's just me. And under Psychic Hermit, Mystic versus Bypass. So, yes, the may or may not be a mystic, of course, but if he is mystical, then is he really gaining? Well, you can gain a lot as, as a hermit, sort of. There's nothing to distract you, nothing to bring you down. But if you're brought down so easily by other people, how solid is your gain? How well has the die really set into the fabric? Just something to think about. It can be a form of bypass to be a hermit. You're not really gaining at some point. You're just kind of stagnating. You need other people to challenge you and shake your world up a little bit. So ultimately the shiny people attract people and are masters at attracting people, but they have to keep them at an arm's length. They can't give everybody everything, so they kind of become a master at that. And I've noticed some of them seem to never really settle in with a mate. You know, they date and everything, but they never really find the right spouse that they can really stay with. So all these things are, you know, just generalities, and none of them might be somebody who kind of fits one of them, but most of us fit, you know, several of these. So I don't know what the big take is off all of this, kind of exploring different personality types, trying to understand different people, I guess. Different arch archetypes. Stereotypes. It's all just one experience. Experienced several different ways. So most people you know and ourselves are a combination of these things. We're not just one stereotype. We're maybe resonate with two or three of these. It's just a way of understanding. So that's a quick look at some of the energy games people play. And the energy exchanges between all of us, you know. 
I really don't interact with anybody, even just visually, without some kind of interaction with energy. This is some kind of examples of just the way we react to each other when we see each other.